In more than a month since Attorney General Daniel Cameron took on the Breonna Taylor case and held what he called an informational news conference, he asked then for patience. So far, no indication about what charges, if any, could be filed against the three police officers at the center of the fatal shooting. Tonight, Shane McAllister is talking to a Louisville legal expert about possible charges and Cameron's handling of this case. Shay? Well, Doug, the attorney general has refused to give any kind of timeline for when a decision will be made in the case, and experts say that's understandable. But they say keeping the public in the dark about what's happening in the investigation is not okay. This expert actually called the ability to inform the public without compromising the investigation the difference between a good and a bad prosecutor. What happened on the night of March 13th at Breonna Taylor's South Louisville apartment? That's the most basic question Attorney General Daniel Cameron's team of investigators is working to answer. I know it's not been as quick as anyone uh, would have liked, uh, but know and trust that we are doing our best uh, to uh, complete this investigation in a timely manner. U of L law professor Sam Markison says he doesn't predict criminal charges for all of the officers, but does think Brett Hankinson, who has since been fired from LMPD, could be indicted. I think he's by far the most likely to be charged. The, the very fact that the LMPD uh, fired him for what it called uh, misconduct and uh, endangering people not acting in conformity with LMPD policy. Pretty much everything in that determination could also be used to make a strong case for wanton endangerment at the very least. Markison says he thinks charges could have already been filed against Hankinson. Based on information released to the public, he argues AG Daniel Cameron should have already filed those charges. The political and community sensitivity of it is affecting the decision making and the handling of the case by the attorney general and that is um, and that is not the way it's supposed to work. The longtime law professor says he understands why Cameron won't commit to a timeline, but he takes issue with Cameron's refusal to give updates on the investigation. But in a time where the community is on edge, where there is so little faith in law enforcement among big parts of our community, Part of the job of the attorney general is recognizing that reality, dealing with it and adjusting his approach to meet the need. And I think that the complete wall of silence to discuss even any to make any comments about how the investigation is proceeding, how it's being handling, I think is a um, is a major failing on the attorney general's part. Cameron's office has continually declined to comment on the status of the investigation or answer any questions about what's happening behind the scenes, claiming it could interfere with the investigation. But Markison says there is a way to be a transparent person in a situation like this and that Cameron is choosing not to do so. Doug?